Okay, so as some of you may know, I am a huge mood reader. So when I finish a book, I'm like, what the hell do I pick up next? And my brain is just like, we don't know. <laughs> so I do have a lot of books on my physical TBR and I brought a couple with them to my dorm here in Utrecht. So let's do a bit of a try a chapter video to see which book I want to pick up next. And in order for me to read a good book, of course I need to wear my glasses. Oh my gosh, smooth transition to today's sponsor, which is glassesusa.com. Cutting out the middleman, glassesusa.com offers glasses and sunglasses with a 70% discount on the retail price. You can shop all of your eyewear needs at affordable prices prices on their website without having to leave your home. A really nice function that they have on glassesusa.com is that you can like try on the glasses virtually. And I did that whilst choosing all of these pairs that I will show you very, very soon. Sometimes you just look at a pair of glasses and you're like, I don't know if this would suit me and my face. And then with that virtual try on option, you can decide whether you want the pair of glasses or not. They offer over 9,000 pairs of sunglasses and glasses, including in-house brands such as Muse and Amelia E, but also more well-known brands, designer brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Armani, Gucci, and many more. You can find every single like color and style on their website, and they even have like specialty glasses, such as sport glasses, safety glasses, and kids glasses. And almost all the pairs can be ordered with your prescription, but also with blue light lenses for the peeps just like me who use their computer a lot. Shopping online at glassesusa.com is also risk-free because they offer free shipping and returns and you receive the full refund when you have shipped them back to glassesusa.com within 14 days of you receiving them. And they have a 365 day product warranty. So I will show you guys the four glasses that they sent me. I am so excited about them. They are actually all from this brand called Octodo, if I'm saying it correctly. So the one that I'm currently wearing that is giving me all the like dark academia vibes is the Otoro Professor glasses in the color turtoise. I don't have a lot of silver glasses, so I chose this one, the Otoro Biagio, but it is kind of like clear and see-through on the bottom. It's very subtle. I really love the look of this one. And I also didn't own a pair of colorful glasses. So this one is the Otoro Waterloo in pink and gold, and it does match really well with my skin tone. So again, I feel like it is a very subtle look too, but I love it so much. And then last but not least, I got myself some sunglasses with a prescription and I think these look so cool. I feel like I'm from the matrix or something. <laughs> look at that. So you can check out glassesusa.com's glasses for yourself by clicking the link in my description and you can use my personal coupon code to save some money off of their glasses. Again, thank you so much glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video. So right now, let's go on and try and read some of the books that I brought with me. Okay, so these are the three options that I wanna choose from for today's video. Two of them are actually kind of similar in the plot, I think. It just has like that kind of like fall autumnal magical feeling. They just intrigue me so much. And then one of them is kind of different. So I guess let's start with the synopsis for that. And that is The Heart Principle by Helen Hong. She's a very popular adult romance author. And this is kind of like the third book in a companion novel trilogy. All I know is that our main character is a violinist called Anna Sun and she has like a YouTube channel and became super, super famous. And ever since that moment, she has been kind of trying to achieve the same amount of success with her videos. And it's just a lot for her. I think at the beginning of this book, she is in a burnout. And then on top of that, her current boyfriend tells her that he wants to be in an open relationship. And even though Anna doesn't want that, she agrees to it. And she tries to have multiple one night stands. And one of them is Quan Dieppe, but they're not very successful with their one night stands. But throughout this story, I think they start to get to know each other a bit better. And I've heard just amazing things about this book. So I don't know, sometimes when school is super busy, like right now, I want to have more of like an easy read. And although I feel like mental health will be a big aspect of the story as well, I do like to read romances during busy periods in my life because it's just so addicting. And then the two books that are kind of similar, one, well, they're both actually really popular booktube reads. One is just a bit older. That is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. This one I think was quite popular maybe five years ago on booktube. So we follow our main character, 
Harry, maybe if you could tell by the title, he has lived a couple of lives. No matter what he does or the decision he makes, every time Harry dies, he always returns to where he began. A child with all the knowledge of a life lived a dozen times before. Nothing ever changes until now. As Harry nears the end of his 11th life, a little girl appears at his bedside. I nearly missed you, Dr. August, she says. I need to send a message. This is the story of what Harry does next and what he did before and how he tries to save a past he cannot change and a future he cannot allow. It's like a historical fiction with perhaps like time traveling, multiple lives. Like it's a very mysterious synopsis and it intrigues me so much. And back in the day when this was popular, I was already so intrigued by it. And now I just wanna find out for myself what the hype was all about, but another extremely popular book here in the book community is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And I'm getting kind of similar vibes from the first 15 lives of Harry August and this one. I mean, their titles are also kind of similar in some way. I don't know. But in this one, we follow our main character, Eddie LaRue. She made a deal with the devil at the beginning of the 1700s because she just wanted to escape her current life and there were a lot of restrictions going on and she just did not feel comfortable. So she made a deal that she will live forever, but she will be forgotten by everyone that she meets until she meets Henry. And that is basically all that I know about this story. So I do love V.E. Schwab. I have read the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. I read Vicious very recently. I read this Savage song, but haven't continued on with it. So I have read quite a lot of her books. Oh, and her middle grade series. I'm quite a big fan of her, but I have heard mixed opinions about this one. But we will just read the first chapters of all of them. And then I will tell you my general opinions and which one I will be continuing on with. read a chapter. I'm on page 14 right now and I made a couple of notes on what I read so I'll be looking at those as well. At the start of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Addie is found in Toby's bed and you get to know that Toby and Addie have been kind of like hanging out. She I think likes Toby but of course every single time that like Addie spends the night with him he doesn't remember her the moment that he wakes up and it's kind of like awkward. So that situation makes me feel so sad. I mean, just imagine that people don't remember you and that you can never have like a full on emotional connection with someone for like a prolonged time. I don't know what my life would be without that, to be honest. Besides that, you get to know that like Addie has these seven freckles on her cheeks that kind of look like stars and I have a feeling like that's gonna be something. I think at the beginning it was stated that those seven stars represent all the people that Addie will love. But also I think like the chapters or just the story in general will kind of like jump in between times because the first chapter starts in 1714 and then the other one that we continue on reading is like in 2014. The Ishwab has very I don't know if I could say very lyrical writing, but it's not like dry. It's not like she's simply explaining things or stating things as they are. I already feel like I can write down a lot of amazing quotes, but besides that, like I'm intrigued about this book, but I just, I don't know what to expect. So it's a very like open beginning. I think next I'm gonna read The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North because it kind of has the same like living multiple lives, time traveling, 
aspects like it's not the same maybe it's because they both play with the idea of time i remember that this one had very short chapters so i'm just gonna like read around 15 pages of this one as well to kind of get like a general idea of what this book will be about because i think it's unfair if i read like 14 pages of addy larue and only three of this one <laughs> so let's do that and start with chapter one five minutes later okay very different honestly from Addie LaRue, mostly in the writing style until so far. I don't know how to phrase it differently, but this one has a very dry writing style. So like Henry kind of like states who his parents are and like what his life looked like for the first time that he lived it. And then he dies at like a very old age and he tells us that in the upcoming rest of his life, he most of the times dies of the same cause, which I believe was a form of cancer. I don't know exactly which one it was again. And then he wakes up after he died as a child again and it just messes him up so much that in his second life he goes to like a, a mental hospital or like a, a mental asylum in like the 1960s if i'm correct and he kills himself so i feel like this one will have very difficult topics in it as well because it was kind of like told to us as the reader so abruptly like okay i jumped out of a window and i fell on my neck and i was like oh okay <laughs> that happened i guess but at the start of this novel you get to know that at the deathbed deathbed on his like 11th life this german girl pops up beside him and she tells him the world is ending and we cannot prevent it so now it's up to you so that does really intrigue me it's just like the writing style it doesn't feel like what i'm looking for right now in a book okay oh my god i hit myself in the face now on to the romance book so that's completely like a different vibe but we shall see what i think of it okay read chapter one i don't know i, I have a feeling that anna has like a mental disorder if i can say it like that or like she has something for which she has to go to therapy she also goes to therapy and the therapy she also goes to therapy in the first chapter for instance she says that she is practicing like a i don't know how you call that when you play like a musical instrument and you have to play the same music over and over again and she keeps on repeating it so much until it is completely perfect and she like sets a timer for it and she cannot stop playing before the timer goes off or like she has therapy at 2 p.m and if she comes two minutes too early she's really like stressing about how that would come across to her therapist but also if she would be late like it needs to be exactly at 2 p.m but i do like that that will probably be like a big discussion in this book as well because i think representation of like mental health issues is so important also in fiction to showcase like you're not alone if you have like a mental disorder or like if you need to go to therapy it's not a taboo i mean there's not like a lot of romance in the first chapter but i don't think that you can really expect that with like a romance novel there needs to be like a build-up in that as well let me think about my thoughts and then i will tell you in like one second which book i will be reading next okay I've made my decision. So the one that's not gonna be the next book that I'll read is The First 15 Lives of Harry August. Not because the subject doesn't intrigue me because it really, really does. I like reading about books that play with the idea of time, but just the writing style did not make me feel like, okay, this is gonna be like a next favorite or something that I need to pick up right now. Is it gonna be The Heart Principle or Addy LaRue? It's not gonna be The Heart Principle. <laughs> Even though, like I just said, I really like all the aspects that are being discussed already like in the synopsis of this book and in the first chapter I do feel like this could be a really really great romance novel that I will enjoy because obviously I like learning stuff about psychology and mental health so I think I will be picking this up very soon because I like romance books that also deal with serious subjects as well but the book that we'll be picking up next is Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab I mean obviously the hype is also kind of like the reason why I want to tackle this book usually hyped books scare the crap out of me because I'm very scared <laughs> of having unpopular opinions but i really enjoy v.e schwab's work so she's also kind of like a comfort author for me to go to because i'm pretty sure i can't hate her work but the beginning of this is a bit slow we shall see 
on which end of the spectrum I will end of like, this is not it versus, oh my gosh, God tier content. So let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of these books that I showed you guys today. And if you have, what are your thoughts on them? Let me know in the comments down below and do not forget to check out classesusa.com as well. Plus my special discount code. All of the links will be in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.